Hey neighbor, if you just finished watching the Ninja 5 review video, I said that I wouldn't have time to do a full setup in that video. Also, I realized it was just too specific. And yeah, like I mentioned, uh, kind of jokingly, but seriously, Gerald and Dunn had to do a whole video on how to set up recorders and monitors for Sony cameras. So this is going to be specific to Fuji and it's going to be specific to really the X-T3 and the X-T30. I think it will apply to other Fuji cameras that have come out like the X-H1 and will come out soon like the X-T4. But anyway, I'm just gonna show you real quick my Ninja 5 setup for the Fuji system. And if it applies to anyone else, then that's awesome. But if you're watching this and you're bummed that it doesn't make sense for you or for your camera, that's because I'm working with Fuji. So yeah, let's just start with the recorder itself. This is the Atomos Ninja 5. Go watch my full conversation or review if you haven't already. And today I'm just going to be using a smaller battery right here. And I could be using one of these big chunky batteries, but for the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna be using one of these smaller batteries, keep my setup really light. So I'm just gonna attach that in the back here and I'm going to turn it on. And usually you just have to wait a few seconds for it to do its thing. So it's starting up, you hear that, that fan noise. And then I'm gonna take my SSD and I'm going to plug that in here. And now with the small rig mount that I have, it's the swivel and tilt mount. I'm going to attach it just in the hot shoe of my camera right now. And I'm just gonna screw it down and there we go. So we now have a fully running recorder ready to go, but now we need to attach it with our HDMI cable. So I think this is a Ugreen cable. Uh, Gerald then done another shout out to him. He has a full breakdown of like every HDMI cable that you can buy. So I'm just going to attach the plug here to the in and I'm going to plug this in to the out here, the HDMI mini out. I'll rotate that for you. So yeah, the in and then the out and I just have a little cable tie on here because this cable is too long. Uh, I do have a shorter one and you can buy coil ones that are springy and they make things a little easier, but I like this because it clearly is not pulling on the micro HDMI port or the full size HDMI port because we know how famously finicky micro HDMI ports are or mini, whatever they are. So yeah, this is my Ninja 5 setup. I've shown this in other videos before, but this is a really run and gun style setup. I can just take it off, go handheld and I'm ready to go. But I'm going to show you right now what it's like to record with this setup. Um, so yeah, I am just gonna dive into the settings here and I'll just let you see what it's like. Okay, so here we are in the Fuji menu. Right when we start, we're in the My menu, but we're gonna go over and we're gonna skip to the video settings here. Once you enter the movie mode settings, we're going to go all the way down until we see the first setting about HDMI, which is this one. This is the F-Log versus HLG recording. This will tell your camera whether or not the SD card and the HDMI signal should be recording different things, whether that's the film simulation, F-Log, or HLG. I prefer to keep these identical so that if I'm recording one on the SD card, I want the other on the Atomos, the Ninja 5 via HDMI. So that's just my personal preference, but I do that so that I have an exact copy of the file. Yeah, if any reason I lose one file or the other, I'll just have the same one instead of having a picture profile or some film simulation versus F-Log. Now if we keep going down, we'll find the 4K movie output and the full HD movie output. And this is just recording whether or not one or the other is recording HD or 4K or is recording at all. I just leave them both 
default 4K, 4K, full HD, full HD. And then I keep going and HDMI info display out. This is very important to turn off. Turn this setting off because if you leave this on, it will record your camera's display on the Ninja 5. So any of the settings that are shown when you're shooting, we'll go back here, any of these settings will be shown on your Ninja 5 and will be baked into the recording. So you don't want that, so make sure you turn it off. And then 4K HDMI standby quality, leave that on 4K, just leave it on default. And then make sure you turn this one on. This is the HDMI record control. This will make it so that when you press your shutter button to start a video, it will record on the Ninja 5 as well. So it'll trigger the Ninja 5 recording and your camera recording. This is very, very important. Leave that on, super important. And then really once you keep going, you find there's not that many other settings related, but there is one very, very important one and it's here in power management. So if you want to bypass the X-T3 or X-T30 recording time limits, then you have to turn the time limit auto off setting to off. You don't want it on 30 seconds, five minutes, you want it completely off. You do not want your camera to turn off automatically because your Ninja 5 is recording this output of your camera. So if you turn the power off on power management, if you turn that to like five minutes say, that you, know, you can record for 29 minutes and 59 seconds on your X-T3, but then as soon as you get to 34 minutes, you know, or 35 minutes or whatever, it will turn off the camera and then it will stop the Ninja 5 recording. So you just wanna leave that on, just, yeah, keep it, or keep it off, sorry. Uh, you do not want your camera to automatically power off if you are trying to bypass the 29 minute limit. So yeah, just keep the boost mode on so that the screen doesn't get laggy or anything like that. There's saving, power saving settings. So just leave it on boost mode, turn that off if you need to bypass the screen recording length limit. And that's pretty much it. Add any of those. You should add any of those to the My Menu that you need to access quickly, uh, like I have here with the F-Log HLG recording. But otherwise, just know that that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's the Fuji settings. So I walked you through the actual physical setup. I walked you through the Fuji settings. And now for the Ninja 5 settings and a few of those little tweaks. Um, in the Ninja 5 full review, I mentioned some of these things, but I wasn't able to make like a user guide. But here I'm going to tell you specifically how to do some of that stuff. So really, I'm just going to start by turning off the Ninja 5 and I'm going to remove the SSD so that I can plug in my LUTs and I'll show you what that's like in the settings. But first, I'm just going to record this and now I'm going to go into the computer for a sec and talk to you there. Okay, so here we are. I've already got my LUTs pulled up. These are LUTs that I made, plug, but the Ninja 5 still has a bunch of footage on it. So I can't put my LUTs on there quite yet. So what I have to do is I have to open by command search, disk, utility, and I'm gonna open up disk utility. I'm going to go to my Ninja 5 here. I'm going to say erase, XFAT, and I'm not going to use this as backup. So there we go. I went ahead, I formatted it. So now I'm just gonna open the Ninja 5 and right there in the root directory, I'm just going to plug in my Fujifilm LUT because I'm gonna be shooting on Fujifilm. So that's it, I transferred it over. You do have to do this each time you format the file or the drive, which is annoying, but that's what you have to do. So now I can exit these and I can export the Ninja 5 or eject the Ninja 5 drive. And now we're ready to go back to the camera. 
All right, now that we have the LUTs on the SSD, I'm just going to plug it right back into the Ninja 5. And that's a solid connection. And then you just hold the power button for a couple seconds and you just let it boot up, do its thing. And now you see it establish the connection with the camera. So let's dive into the settings. We're just gonna start with what'll get you ready to shoot and then we'll go more advanced from there. So really a lot of what you're gonna be working with is this gray bar up here for the actual like shooting and the information that you're gonna need. But then these settings down here are going to be the finer points of actually using the monitor settings and some of that stuff. So yeah, this is mostly recording and this is mostly monitoring. So let's just start with the recording settings up here. So right away you can see log versus HDR uh, or just standard. And then it shows you gamma, F gamut or whatever gamut you're shooting in. But I'm gonna be turning this off because I'm going to be shooting in Rec. 709 in a standard Fuji picture profile. So the HDMI is on the trigger right there. And yeah, everything else, Rec. 709, Rec. 709. So we're ready to go inside of this particular menu. And now I'm gonna click output. I don't have any output, so we're just gonna leave that. Um, if you need time code or anything, that's gonna happen right there. Uh, there's another place for that as well. But then the record settings, this is just telling you if you wanna record in ProRes and then what amount of compression of ProRes and then what recording format. So uh, really you just press and that's gonna change each setting. I always shoot in ProRes LT um, because it's the smallest compression. I just don't need the significant amount of inform information that the others give me. And as you tap, you can see your time change on your recording. This is a 500 gigabyte drive and I like having three hours on a 500 gigabyte drive. But if you need more information and don't mind having less time on your drive, then change that. Um, or you can change it to DNxHR if you'd prefer to work with that codec as opposed to ProRes. So I'm gonna change that back. And then I'm gonna go into the file. Now, this is something that if you're working on a big set or a true production is really, really important. But for me, this is not that important. So I really don't mess with the shot scene take or the letter, anything like that. Um, yeah, if I shoot two weddings on one run of the SSD on one use of the SSD, I will change the scene, which is why it's at five instead of one. But otherwise, I pretty much never touch the file structure at all. And then meters, I have the first meter set to recording. And this is because that way the Ninja 5 itself is recording a signal from the HDMI as opposed to turning all of them off, I wouldn't get any audio, which I really want to have an audio file attached to the Ninja 5 footage. So yeah, I put that on, but you can also attach a mic to the Ninja 5 and you can record using those right there. Um, and I believe that you can also control whether or not you're monitoring uh, which one specifically. So yeah, if you move that around, you can plug in headphones and monitor specific lines. So yeah, then we go to audio. And again, I just don't really use this. I tend to use my audio with my camera or with a lav mic. And then media is just going to tell you what you have plugged in. And I use a WD 500 gigabyte um, blue drive. And then for time code, if you need that, you can visit there. I don't date and time, I set that up and just have left it ever since. And then this will tell you how much is left on your battery in terms of voltage. This is not that convenient for me. I wish that it did percentages because sometimes I'm at 7.6 like I am now 
and it will show me three quarters of the battery as opposed to completely full. So yeah, I wish that it was better, but it's not. So anyway, then you have all of your monitoring settings down here, which will give you zebras, will give you, uh, sorry, peaking, will give you zebras, which are not effective right now, uh, as well as all of these settings that I haven't even touched yet, but these will give you your scopes. Um, and there's just so much. There's false color. Um, that's gonna be really helpful. There's zoom to check your focus. There's uh, guidelines here. There's um, aspect ratios so that you can observe your aspect ratio while shooting without actually doing the anamorphic but then there's the anamorphic squeezing or de-squeezing. So all of this is probably more than I ever use or need, but they're great monitoring settings. And now I'm gonna show you with this button here, this is how I use my LUT. You can see my LUT is on that first one there. There's only one LUT installed. And when I tap that, it tells you what that LUT is right here. Um, but I'm gonna override that one LUT that I have installed and I'm going to install my LUT. And so now that I have installed that, whoops, I need to, yeah, there we go, double tap and then it installs it. Okay, so now I can turn on if I want that during my recording to bake in the LUT or if I just want it during the output um, so that I can see a preview really. So if I turn on the during recording, I have to go into my monitor here and click LUT, there we go. And then I can go during output or I can just say during recording or I can turn off both. So yeah, right now it's monitoring with my LUT applied as opposed to just the native signal. And then in here, you can also change your tally settings. Um, you can change whether that light locks, you can flip the screen here and then flip it back. So there's a lot of settings in here. There's also the colors for the focus peaking and the method that it does that. There's your waveform, how bright it is versus the opacity of it laid against your image. So just a ton of settings. And then there's also the tagging settings. So this is great if you're on a full production set, you can favorite when you're reviewing images. Um, you can even export the XML files. So just more than I would ever use. Really my key setup is what I have it on right now. Every now and then I'll uh, tweak the peaking or I'll use the zebras. Uh, every now and then I also use false color more and more. That's something I'm playing with, but Anyway, these are the key settings that I use it for, and that's how you monitor with LUTs, is you just go in, you install the LUT, and then you monitor right there. So that's one of the most important pieces. Okay, after walking you through the settings of the Fuji and of the Ninja 5, I really hope that you get a better grasp of what it's like to shoot with this tool, as well as why you might want one for the Fuji system. This whole setup and everything is pretty specific to Fuji cameras, but yeah, again, it might apply to others. I have found almost all of this is consistent with the X-T30 um, and with the X-H1 and the coming probably X-T4 as well. But if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. Please buy my LUTs, buy my course, use the links below to purchase stuff. It all helps to support and grow my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good day.